Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 12th, and uh, it's a little chilly today. Sunny, but uh, 30 some degrees. Gonna go up to 46 though, not bad for February 12th, although it's gonna be a bit cloudy. Yeah, not a terrible day, uh, not a terrible day for a Sunday. So for those of you that have been playing along, uh, my wife has been in Pittsburgh uh, visiting her parents and she was supposed to come back yesterday. She decided to extend her stay another day, which again, if you've been following along, you know that's not an uncommon occurrence uh, and it's fine. But she, uh, she is coming back today and she has promised that she will be here in time for the, uh, the big game tonight. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, she's not quite the Eagles fan that I am, having grown up in, in Pittsburgh. Uh, she, we have a lot of fun when uh, the Eagles uh, on occasion play the Steelers. But yeah, um, so she's, she'll, she'll watch along. She watches it more for commercials and halftime shows and things like that. I uh, ignore the commercials and leave the room for the halftime show because I can't stand it. Um, I don't know who those people are. They sing like crap, and I have no interest in it. Anyway, that's enough of that. But, uh, yeah, pretty excited. I mean, you know, it, to see the Eagles win a Super Bowl in my lifetime was amazing. I never thought I'd see that. To actually get to see them play in two is, you know, and boy, if they win. And, you know, I hope they win, but who knows? Who knows? And I know a lot of you Cardinals fans out there. Card I keep calling them the Cardinals baseball brain. <laughs> I know a lot of you Chiefs fans are uh, going to be very disappointed if the Eagles win, so best of luck to you, and uh, let, let's let's have a good game. I mean, that's blowouts are never fun. I don't think they're fun for either side, so let, let's hopefully have a good game, and uh, not one fraught with injuries like that uh, 49ers game was. Ah, so, got um, 7 LE 611, I think, 622 maybe. Uh, it's the poker. I can't remember the number. Uh, gift of my buddy, Christian, and uh, I love this pipe. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful, I, I really enjoy it. I never, never thought I'd like a poker, but I, I enjoy smoking this pipe just flat out. If I had bought it myself, I would have enjoyed it, but... The fact that it was a kind gift from a friend, it just, you know, every time I pick it up, I think of him and the time we, we spent together uh, when we met one another and, and the pipes we shared and everything. It's a wonderful pipe. And I brought it down here today because this is, uh, well, I brought it down here today because I wanted to smoke it, but when I got it down here, I realized it needed a little TLC, so I reamed the cake down a bit and uh, ran a couple pipe cleaners through it just to get that cake dust out of there and uh, it's happy. But as I was doing that I realized this is one of the pipes that I tuned up a bit. You know, I, I worked on the funneling of the stem a little bit and I uh, this has a, a a filter adapter in it because I don't use filters and I had actually funneled the end of that adapter. Uh, yeah, just minor little things like that makes can make your pipe smoke a lot better. Can make it easier for you to smoke your pipe well. The pipe doesn't do the smoking you do. And I've talked about this in a couple of videos now, but I am 90-ish percent certain I'm going to reopen cane rod pipes and uh, do pipe tune-ups and simple jobs. Not nothing like stem replacements, but. Uh, yeah, I will make stems. I'll make stems for pipes I make. Uh, I might make some cob stems. I, don't, I am going to make some cob stems. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I just, the replacement stems are just, they just take so much time because getting that match between the stem and the shank without damaging the shank is, uh, is a very slow process. And yeah, just not going to do that anymore. There's other people out there that do it faster than I do at the same quality, and I will gladly send you their way. So, look for more information on that coming uh, probably in the next month or so. I'm not, I'm not in any rush. 
uh, got to get the website retooled and I got other stuff going on, but we'll, we'll get to it. So I'm going to do a box opening of sorts because I got something I want to show you that's in a box that I haven't opened. And that something is pipe related. This something is not pipe related, but I know you, a lot of you guys are into tools and home improvement or uh, woodworking or, or whatever. So I hope you indulge me because I get excited about little things like this. I bought this guy off of Amazon. This is, uh, for those of you that don't know, it's a combination square. And uh, these are used to strike square lines across the board. Or, using this edge here, you can strike a 45 degree, which I never do, but it could, in theory, be used for that. I use it for square lines. I have several of these that are 12 inch, um, some old Stanleys that, that I love dearly. Uh, but I do not have a small one like this, a, a 6 inch. And I've been trying to find an old Stanley 6 inch, and I can't. Uh, I will eventually. But I got this one. It's new. The brand is Swanson. And from what little I can tell, um, Swanson is a U.S. company. However, these are manufactured in China. So uh, Swanson is actually an older company, and they shifted their manufacturing over to China. So you know, you may or may not want to buy into that. But uh, this thing cost under ten dollars on Amazon, and it is really solid. I mean, I'm I'm very impressed at, at how smoothly the uh, the thing slides how easily it locks um, it's got a level which I'll never use it's got a scribing line which I'll never uh, scribing scribe a pointy bit that you in theory can use to but I, I use a knife so I'm not gonna likely ever need that but uh, it's actually very solidly made and I checked it this morning for accuracy and it is dead on square which is impressive. I mean, I, I've tried a lot of these, not not this brand, but uh, squares that you just pick up at yard sales and such, and they're rarely in square. Uh, I've gotten one or two from like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, and they're not as square as this thing is. This thing is really, really good. So, you know, I, and I'm only talking about this one. You buy one, it might not be the same. No affiliation. I'm not trying to in any way promote them, but... You know, I thought it might be, it's a little gem that if you're into this sort of thing and you're looking for a small square, not a bad buy. Uh, the one complaint I've got is the edges are very sharp. Um, I mean, yeah, you could probably cut yourself on them. They're, they're that sharp, and that's going to make it hard to use this. It's going to you know, catch on the wood and such. So I will just take a uh, probably a medium grit Arkansas stone or a diamond hone or something and just run it along the the arras, not 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 the flat edge, because I don't want to change that at all, but just the, the place where those two faces meet, and just put a little bit of softening into that, and do that all, on all the, the edges. And uh, yeah, the numbers are actually etched, uh, not terribly deep, but they are etched and then they're filled, so they're easy to see. Ah, got good things to say about the Swanson 6 inch square, so thought you might enjoy that. Uh, and again, for all I know, the quality control is terrible, and I got lucky, so I'm not not promising you anything, but my experience was pretty good. So this is a package that I got in the mail yesterday from Exotic Blanks, is the name of the company. These are folks I use to buy um, blanks, uh, pen turning blanks. And... Normally when I make stems, I get, uh, when I make acrylic stems, I get the acrylic from Vermont Freehand, uh, Steve Norse. And I've been doing that for, for years. He has a very nice selection. But sometimes I get requests for things that uh, I can't find in, in the uh, variety that he has. So then I have to look for pen blanks. And they work great, and they come in many, many more colors. Uh, the problem is you got to make them round. They come to you square, and you got to make them round. Why am I talking about 
pen blanks. Well, a very good friend of mine approached me and said, can you make me a couple of uh, purple cob stems? And my initial reaction was, no, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to make stems. But, um, and, and I explained to him, and, and yeah, I love this guy dearly. So, you know, of course I said yes. And, but my lathe is not functional right now. Um, I need to replace the, um, the, the gearing and the spindle bearings on it. It runs okay. It's a little noisy. And uh, I, I just want to replace those things. This is my metal lathe that I'm talking about. It's also buried right now because of the other stuff that I've been doing. So I can't get to it, but I said, you know, I will. I'll, I'll do this for you. And he said, as long as it's by spring, he'll be happy. So I'm going to make him a couple of uh, cob stems. He wants them to be purple. Thus the purple theme and the purple plant in the opening uh, of the video. And we'll get to that plant too. So I checked around and I don't have any purple. Uh, I looked at Vermont Freehand, and either he didn't have purple, or I didn't like the purple that he had. I can't remember. So I went to Exotic Blanks, and I got other stuff in here, and I do not know what I bought, so I don't remember. Those are not pen blanks. Ah, here we go. Let's see what you think of these. I got basically two options here. I'm gonna I'm gonna use one of each. Give them a variety. This is the first one. Really cool. Uh, white light swirl in the purple. And then uh, this is a more sort of I don't know. It's got darker elements. There's still some light elements. It's not as uh, obvious a swirl, but it's a it's a really Cool looking. Uh, I think that'll look really neat when it's polished up and uh, should make a couple of really nice cob stems. So I'm going to do this. When I do this, uh, because I use a Delrin tenon when I make a cob stem, instead of just making these two, I'm probably going to batch out a couple dozen of the Delrin tenons because they're all always the same for cobs. And then uh, I'll have them and maybe like, you know, when I got a spare hour or something I'll turn a turn a stem blank and uh, put a tenon in it and start to shape it and maybe in a couple days I'll have a cob stem that I can throw up on the website so something to do and I know folks like the cob stems I know you can get the forever stems and they're they're great and uh, you know, I highly recommend them if you're looking for a replacement stem but uh, I, I put a lot of effort and care into my stems as anybody that's got one knows and uh, I think mine are better so we will be making those the other stuff in this box you might be interested in is I got some oh. <laughs> this is a great thing about buying from uh, exotic blanks they they send you candy uh, I got some pen making stuff there's some drill bits and uh, and these are actually pen kits. I thought that would be, that's a relatively simple turning project that, you know, I'm not going to open that now. You, you, don't, you know what a pen looks like. I don't even, I can't read it. But, uh, yeah, I thought that would be fun and not that different from turning a tamper or anything else. I, oddly enough, I don't think I've ever turned a pen. I don't, I don't remember turning a pen. It seems like something I would have done, but... And I doubt I did, because I didn't have a mandrel. One of the things in there is a, is a mandrel, which you don't technically need. But anyway, I'm babbling. Uh, yeah, so probably going to be making some pens and, and tampers and, and cob stems. And those are things that I'll put on the website and uh, start to do some of these jobs like the pipe tune-up that I've talked about before which is basically just fixing the airways and, and whatnot uh, 
estate pipe cleaning, regular pipe cleaning. You know, there's some guys out there that just hate cleaning their pipes. You know, send, send them out once a year and get them cleaned. I can do that. Uh, deghosting. I have a method for deghosting that I believe is better than anybody else could do just because of the... I put a lot of research into it. I use a three-step process and I have a retort that's better than most people have. So, you know, if you got a pipe that's ghosted and you can't get it deghosted, I can get it deghosted. Uh, I'd even put a money back guarantee on that. That's how confident I am in my deghosting method. And I know there's guys sitting out there saying, hey, you know, all you need to do is salt treat it. And go, yeah, that works like 90% of the time, but there are times when, uh, usually not your own, a ghost that you introduce, they, they usually go, but you get these pipes sometimes. I don't know what these old timers were smoking. Uh, honestly, I don't. It's not Lakeland. It's not any aromatic that I can identify, but there is something that permeates these pipes. And I've had estate pipes where I couldn't smoke them because of it. And, you know, I tried everything, and then eventually I hit on this process. And, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. What, what were those guys smoking? Because <laughs> it's common. That That's the weird thing about it. It's not like, uh, you know, it occurs every once in a while. It it's not it's not common that it's so hard to get rid of, but it's common that you get this this particular ghost. And I wish I could describe the flavor, but I can't. It's it's an almost artificial flavor, to be honest. And that might be my wacky palate too. So anyway, I just call it the old time ghost. So I wanted to. Uh, as I, as I was getting ready to make this video, I you know, wanted to. I, I was thinking purple stems, so I wanted to find a picture for the front. I knew there was going to be an eagle on it because go eagles. But um, I googled purple stem uh, images, and sometimes things like that can on be the dangerous. They say red or purple stems caused by stress, nutrient deficiency. Hey Google, be quiet. Uh, it, I don't know what turned that on. Yeah, I googled purple stems, and uh, oh, that's probably what turned it on. And uh, pictures, and and that image showed up, and I went, I know that plant. And this is actually, it, it turns out it's something called pokeweed. Uh, it's poisonous, which is nice. Uh, grows, it's, it's invasive, it grows like crazy once you have it, and you may well have seen it because it, it's, it's very common. Uh, so I, when I was in grad school, I had a friend that I wound up living with. Uh, he was married, but he had this attic apartment, and I, I moved into the attic apartment and paid him rent, you know, but it was a nice arrangement. He was a buddy, and, you know, we got along. And I would sometimes help him out with stuff, you know, house type stuff. And he had this, this pokeweed growing up by his garage and he couldn't get rid of it. And he, this poor guy tried everything, you know, <laughs> he tried weed killer, he dug it up, he, he uh, burned it and it would just come back. And, it just, and he finally got rid of it. And he was, you know, didn't come back one year and he was so happy. Uh, he finally got rid of it. So... We took a trip to uh, to New Orleans for a conference, and after the conference, uh, we were invited by some friends to visit their family and actually have a Thanksgiving dinner with them. This was in November, and they were because the, the child was in town, they were going to have Thanksgiving early, and so I got to have Thanksgiving dinner with a true Cajun family in. Uh, Grand Isle, I believe it was, Grand Isle, Louisiana. And some of the most wonderful, warm people I've ever met uh, welcomed me in as if I was a member of the family and uh, never felt like anything else. Uh, they, they, they were actually sad to see us leave. And, and I, I mean that sincerely. I could see it in their eyes. So we had a great time there. And the food was incredible. So <laughs> we... One of the things that we, we found is that the, the father, uh, this person's father, 
uh, grew his own hot peppers and he let us try them and these things were amazingly hot, um, just unbelievably hot. And my friend and I both love hot peppers, so he gave us a bunch of these peppers to take home with us. And when we got them home, the friend seeded some of the peppers and dried out the seeds and because he was going to grow them. And he went and he planted some seeds in a pot and, uh, you know, very lovingly took care of this, watering it, checking it you know, every day and all that, and got a little sprout. And he was, oh, you know, the peppers are coming up and he's really excited about this. And and as time goes on, he's, he's, he's just babying these pepper plants. And uh, then one of the stems turned purple. <laughs> he was growing the pokeweed. And nurturing it, which was what the funny part about it. After this several year long battle to get rid of it, he was actually nurturing the, his enemy. Uh, the peppers never grew. I guess the growing conditions in Pittsburgh are a little bit different than the growing conditions in Grand Isle, Louisiana. But uh, I wonder if they have pokeweed in Grand Isle. <laughs> Anyway, folks, this has probably gone on longer than, uh, than it should. Hope you enjoyed the visit. I certainly enjoyed visiting with you. And I'm going to get off now to uh, maybe do some more dovetailing. Um, doing laundry. Get ready for the wife to come home. I've been a relatively good boy. I got to do some dishes and vacuum, but for the most part, I kept up with everything. Maybe have some breakfast. It's going to be one of those days. And of course, watch the Super Bowl tonight. Uh, I hope you all have a great weekend. And uh, looking forward to the week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.